Hey everyone, Cody here, and I had a comment on my Novel Crafter video about actually using Novel Crafter and kind of showing uh, how to use it or how I use it. And this is actually going to be a little bit of both Novel Crafter and ChatGPT. I won't go into like a huge long video about it, just kind of kind of show you how I use it. So essentially, this is Novel Crafter, the inside of it. Um, this is the codex over here on the left side, kind of like I talked about in the video. Uh, the codex is where you can keep all your characters, your locations, um, objects, lore, all that stuff. And it's very, very useful for writing fiction because let's say uh, you write out a character and you forget maybe some of the characteristics of that character. Uh, maybe it's physical description, maybe it's how they talk, or maybe it's what they're wearing. You know, in a lot of t cases, maybe that's not so important, but if there's particular things, you know, you can put it in there and it helps you to do that. Now, the cool thing about Novel Crafter is like when you write something, um, let's say that we go to this chapter uh, two, scene three here. So we'll click on the little pencil and we're going to write a scene. So, um, you know, this is actually a book that I'm not really writing. AI is because I wanted to test it in some different capacities. But essentially what you would do is uh, you would create a new scene. So we're going to click on this. We're going to do chapter two so that it's the full chapter and not just this one scene. We're going to click new scene. And essentially the way Novel Crafter works, it's very straightforward. If you were just writing your book naturally, um, you literally could just type it in. Uh, then Laura, you know, went down the stairs and saw uh, Drake, whatever. I don't know, just make, making stuff up. Um, but essentially, uh, you know, you don't really see anything going on here, right? However, if we put in the name of a character that is in the codex, so we're gonna click on Captain Alora Kane. Um, if we put this in, it's actually going to reference it um, if we run the AI. Now, if we just are typing out our own book, that doesn't mean a whole lot. However, if we want the AI to write something for us, then we are going to do backslash and then we will do scene beat. And so scene beat, you know, uh, we can put in the character and what's going on and it will actually reference that character. So what's cool is if now if I put in Captain Alara Kane, not only can you see the information about her, but in the scene, uh, it's going to pull that information from the codex. So you don't have to sit there and write the information that you've stored over and over and over. It will reference it in the writing. So, uh, you know, if we put, you know, goes down the stairs and says hi to the neighbors, uh, just as like a, t a test. Um, and it's going to say previous scenes are missing summary. So what's crazy is, so you, you'll have your scenes, right? You're going to, the book is written, broken up into scenes in Novel Crafter. And once you have a scene written out, you can click, you know, actions, and then you can have it summarize scene. Now, there is a ton of uh, different models you can choose from. You can actually, you know, do your own model if there's a specific one, and you can edit this. But if you want, there's some free models you can actually use that actually cost you no tokens. You will need an account with Open Router, so it's OpenRouter.ai, um, and then you'll have to put some credits on there. I usually do like ten to fifteen dollars at a time, and that usually lasts a couple of weeks at least. Um, but anyway, you can also do uh, four mini. So four O mini is actually really cheap. Um, so I, I usually do that one or one of the free ones, uh, and it will give you a summary of this. Now, the, the important thing for this is that it wants you to write out a scene and then do the summary so that when you go into the next scene, it actually knows uh, the information of the previous scene to pull into the current scene. So I'm just going to say, I'm going to say that this was the scene regardless of what's going on here um, and then do generate pros. Now here you can actually choose different models. I've fine tuned these. I'm not going to go into all of that. Um, there are full length things about Novel Crafter, but just to kind of give you an idea. Um, 
and then you can choose a model. Now, I like uh, Claude 3.15 um, Sonnet, and this is the beta version, meaning it's the newest version, so it's not quite kind of out to public. It's you know available through, I think, API and maybe Claude Pro users. Um, but anyway, I'm just going to use that one. So once you click on it, it's you, all you have to do is kind of write the summary right, of uh, what's going on. And it will go through and write the scene for you. And this is the power of AI. Because what you can do is, let's say that you're working on a book and you're stuck. And you're like, man, I have some ideas of, of what I want to happen. I just don't have the words specifically for this scene. So what you can do is you can actually just kind of write out parts of the scene and then generate prose and it writes it. Now, I understand that a lot of people are not going to like that because they're going to say, well, I, I'm, I want to write my own book. You know, I want to be you know, the master of it. I don't want AI to write any of it. Well, that's fine. You can just use Novel Crafter really to write in and then have your uh, codex there so that you always have the information there. The codex alone is actually very valuable. And uh, these two sections are also really useful, snippets. So snippets, um, you could just put snippets of something. Let's say you write a scene and then you cut out a bunch of it. You're like, ah, I might use this later. I don't want to get rid of it. You could just throw it in a snippet and it doesn't do anything with the AI. It doesn't pull it. It's just there for later reference. But chat is actually also cool because let's say, um, you know, we had this scene and then we have this scene right here. We're going to discard this, right? And let's say that we had this scene all written out but we're like, I really don't know what to do. There's two ways you can kind of go about this. Now, if you are pro AI and you're like, I, I have no qualms with using AI to help me write the book, but I'm still going to write most of it. That's kind of where I'm at, right? I'm writing, I would say, over 60 to 70% of the book. And then honestly, about a third of it is AI. So, I'll, you know, I'll be honest about that. Um, there's two ways you can kind of use the AI to push the story along if you really don't know what to do next. One is uh, we're going to delete that and we're going to do the slash again and then we'll do continue writing. And so if you do continue the story, you literally just don't push anything else. You choose your um, model and because Claude is a little on the expensive side, uh, I will just choose, actually I'll just go with Wizard LM. Uh, Wizard's okay, but I don't think they update it anymore, so it might actually be a little bit behind. But anyway, um, you would just click continue the story and then generate, and it will generate the next scene for you based on what it thinks it should go based on that summary. So the importance of the summaries of the previous scene is that the next scene, if you have AI write for you, it's going to go based on the previous scene. So now it's got this, you know, whole thing of in the shadow recesses of the Ardent Dawns, Mess Hall, the Cruise Chatter, Wayne, blah, 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 right? Now, I don't want to keep that, so I'm going to click this card. However, if you want a more, um, let's say, direct approach on how to approach the next scene, instead of just doing continue story and having the AI kind of, if you really want the AI to take over and you're like, I don't really care how the story goes as long as it advances, you could try that. But if you want a hand in it and you're like, I do want it to make sense. I just don't know exactly what to do. The other cool thing that you can do is we're going to do actions. So on the scene that we already have written with the, the summary, we're going to do chat with scene. Now, this is actually a really cool feature that I do like. Um, I tend to use uh, Claude 3.5 Sonnet, but you can use ChatGPT. The issue I have with Chat uh, GPT 4 and 4 Mini is that they kind of go off on a tangent that I don't always like. So it's really good for getting descriptions. So I have found that Claude is better for writing. It just in my experience, Claude is better for writing, and uh, GPT or like GPT 4 uh, is better for getting direction. And getting descriptions. So I use ChatGPT to get a description of something. Uh, and then I tend to use Claude to actually write. That's kind of how I do it. So you could choose either one. But I do like Claude overall. So I tend to use that one. So let's say, you know, it's, it's pulled this context of this scene. So the one that we're chatting with. And say, I really don't know, know where to go from here. 
Uh, do you have suggestions? And then you can click send. Now, the reason that this is great for, um, you know, inside of Novel Crafter, the problem that I have with ChatGPT is that mm -hmm. even though it has a memory, if you have like the, the Pro or Plus or whatever it's called, even if you have the memory, it still only remembers so much per thread. So like I have issues with it forgetting things at the top of the thread all the way at the bottom. Even if it has a memory, it still tends to like forget things. Like I'll tell it to change something and it'll change it and it'll add something new, but then also lose something after that. So it's like it only wants to keep so much information. So having it this way, this is actually chatting with the information of the summary of the scene. So it knows based on the last scene that it could do any of these things. Oh, we could, uh, you know, show Alara Kane interrupted, uh, have her discover something unusual, uh, create a scene where a crew member needs her attention, blah, 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 blah. So now we have some suggestions and you can just kind of chat with the scene back and forth and say, you know what? I really like uh, this. So let's say... Let's, uh, you know, let's do this one. So let's go with, this is just kind of how I do it, right? Let's go with show a flashback to a past failure that drives her current obsession. So then, it, you know, then it can uh, give you some questions or some more direction and it'll ask you, you know, what do you want to focus on? So this is really good for, um, you know, if you're stuck and you kind of need some inspiration on where to go with the story, it's a great way to get the AI to kind of talk with you. Now, it does take credits to chat. I'm just letting you know if you use it to generate any kind of chat or any kind of text for the story, it does cost the credits that you put into open router. So I'm just kind of giving that heads up um but that's pretty much it then you could um you could even talk to it enough where it then you could say okay write this scene for me or write the outline for the scene um so you could choose one of these and then you could say yeah write me an outline and then you could put the outline uh into the scene beat and then just put that in there and then generate the pros based on that. So th that's pretty much it. I mean, that's kind of the overview for Novel Crafter. Again, I actually really like it quite a bit, um, mostly because of the codex thing. Because here's the thing. Sometimes I am a lean writer. When I write, it's very lean. You know, this person did this, this person did this, this person did this. And sometimes I just forget even to add sensory or environmental details to kind of paint a better picture. And what's great about Novel Crafter is if you put physical descriptions of things in your codex entries, then when you add those things to the scene beats and then generate the scene beat, uh, you know, it'll add in those details. Now, depending on how much detail you ask it to add, um, to, you know, determines how much it adds, but it generally adds at least like one sentence or two sentence of, you know, of the codex entry. It kind of pulls that information and adds it for you. So generally the way that I'll use it is, you know, I'll say this person went to this place, this place, and, you know, they picked up this thing and they, you know, they went to this place and talked to this person. Um, and, you know, I'll describe the scene a little bit, you know, it was outside, it was, you know, inside, dark, whatever. And that's basically how I roll. So I will just write the whole thing um, using the codex entries of, you know, the people, the places, the objects, and just kind of it'll incorporate all of those things in there. So basically, I am kind of a scene director it, for the most part. I do write some of the, the, I write a lot of the dialogue. I do write most of the prose, but not all of it. Um, but as far as just kind of writing the action stuff, I will just kind of write big chunks of it and then have the AI fill in the gaps, kind of like I talked about in my other video. Now, the last thing I want to kind of just suggest if you're if you're thinking about getting Novel Crafter is having ChatGPT as well, just as kind of a backup. You could also do this with Claude too. So if you like Claude, you could do this instead. I just like ChatGPT because it has the memory, but I'm assuming Claude will have it at some point. Uh, you could use Google Gemini. I have not used it much, so I couldn't say if it's good or not. Um, but basically what I'll do is um, I will just tell ChatGPT, a working on a sci-fi novel and I need an idea or I would actually will say I need a codex entry for 
the captain. You know, she's female. Actually, well, let's take this back a little bit. If I'm stuck, then I'll tell it, hey, I'm working on... Ooh, working on a sci-fi story. And I have some characters... But I need a description of the ship. And basically, I'll have it kind of just ask me some questions or clarify. Yeah, could you share a little bit about it? Blah, blah, blah. Um, sleek Explorer, Massive Warship, Rundown Freighter. Um, let's say Rundown Freighter. Okay, here's a description. And then that's it. And then if you like this, then you can take that. And then when it gives all this, you can literally just copy and paste this. So the Dusk Wanderer. So we would just copy this if we like it, right? But just for time's sake. Let's say that we do like it. The Dusk Wanderer. So then we're going to come over here, new entry. Um, I would say it's an object. And then the Dusk Wanderer. You could copy and paste that too. We'll put it put this in the description, and then tags. We'll just put ship, and that's it. So now, when we reference it, it'll come up, and now it's underlined. So essentially, I use ChatGPT for you know for help with outlining stuff like that. So like if I have some ideas of this character needs to get to this point. I'll say, hey, here's where I'm trying to get to. Um, can you help me? And then I will also ask Novel Crafter if I don't get good results with ChatGPT. The biggest thing I use ChatGPT for is coming up with descriptions. I will give it an idea of where I'm trying to go with it. And then it generally will say, you know, you can even say, you know, can you ask me clarifying questions? You could literally just type that and it will ask you questions to kind of narrow it down. So once you have these, then you can save them in Novel Crafter and then have Novel Crafter write the actual prose. So that's pretty much it. I mean, I didn't want to make this video super long, you know, going over Novel Crafter and all the features and all that. There's a lot of people out there. Um, I don't remember the guy, but... Um, he does the um, oh, he does a lot of AI videos. I think his name's Jeremy or something. Nerdy novelist or something like that. I apologize if I butchered that. I'll try to find him and put a link in the the description area. But essentially, he's got you know kind of an overview novel crafter thing. Uh, but ultimately, novel crafter is great if you're working on fiction. There's a lot of tools out there um, that are better for like. I guess more of the editing side and there's a lot of good tools out there but i have found that this one for the writing aspect is actually really really good um and they actually just updated it yesterday so anyway that's pretty much it for the video i will leave you guys i just i hope that this made sense and if you were thinking about novel crafter i'm not trying to push you over the edge or anything i just think it's a great tool so anyway i'll see you guys in the next one take care god bless bye